here today to kind of go over the new, the, the relatively new um, custom report functionality in, in Project Firma. Who am I? Um, I'm Stuart Gordon, a software engineer here at Sika Tech. Um, I work pretty I work pretty heavily on on the development of this word templating engine. So hopefully I'll be able to answer all your questions. Um, I am a member of the Hawkmoth team. We've we do a lot of work in Project Firma, uh, namely for Reclamation, the Bureau of Reclamation. Um, we also work on Pisces Web or CB Fish um, and the Forest Health Tracker, um, Washington DNR's kind of um, instance of Project Firma that's a little bit different. And even more recently, we've been taking over the Monitoring Resources Project. Um, there's my contact information here on the screen. Um, Absolutely feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. I know we're going to kind of get into the weeds here with some some more technical stuff, um, but I don't want that to scare anybody. Uh, I'm, I'm really confident that people can get started on this thing. And if they, they do need help getting started, feel free to reach out to me or your, your project from a representative. So what is the report templating engine that we have here? Um, essentially, at its core, it's a way for you to write C sharp code within a Microsoft Word document, like here on the left, and reference your projects in Project Firma. So you would write your template here in Microsoft Word, you would upload it to Project Firma, and then Project Firma can merge the, <clears throat> the project information into a, an output Word document that you can then um, make edits, tweak, or anything like that. And then finally, you know, save from Microsoft Word as a PDF and send it out to whoever you need to. Um, next is the why. Um, I know I shouldn't have seven things on one slide, but I felt they're they pretty important and kind of well to the point. Um, the first one is that Project Firma users do a lot of work in the system. Um, everybody here does a lot of work curating their projects on, on their applications. And that means that there's a lot of data that is in the system. And what do people do with data? Um, well, you might wanna use it to inform your future decisions. Um, and regarding the past, you might wanna make reports about your accomplishments or, or statuses of your current work. So this is kind of a way to help facil facilitate that. Um, number two is that the project Fact sheets in Project Firma are great, but we've developed them to be as useful to as many tenants as possible. Um, and to do that, we kind of have to limit the customization in order for the formatting to, to be output in a way that we find um, works for as many people as possible. So they're a bit limited in customization. So we wanted something where you can customize it to your heart's content. Um, number three is that um, everybody typically has access to Microsoft Word. I would bet that everybody here um, and watching the recording later has used Microsoft Word. And probably at this point, I would guess that most of us have spent dozens, if not hundreds of hours working in Microsoft Word. Um, so most people are pretty familiar with how to format a Word document how they want, and your organization might use it a lot already to, to make you know forms or um, other kind of information that you, you send out to the public or, or to some of your partners. Um, number four, we wanted to give more power to the project from a power users. Um, I know that writing some code can seem daunting, especially in a Word document, but we found that in the past by providing users that freedom, they've been able to kind of step up to the challenge and, and produce some pretty amazing things. Um, I'll, go, I'll go over briefly in a moment um, some examples of what people have done on other projects where we've done something very similar. Um, number five, it allows you to brand your reports. You won't be stuck with something that we design as a committee and, and make sure that it works for everybody. This will let you make your reports with whatever colors your organization uses, add your cover letters and, and anything like that to make sure that the reports are yours. Um, number six is that we, we actually have some experience with this. Um, Marathi Share, uh, another SICA project, provides similar functionality. 
it doesn't use C sharp like we use, they use Python, but ultimately it's pretty similar. Um, so we do have some kind of experience in, in doing something like this and, and gathering feedback from, from users and, and kind of working on it incrementally over time to, to make it something that you really want to use and that you find useful. Um, and number seven, probably most importantly, that we hope that this saves everybody some time. Um, we found that organizations often need monthly, quarterly, or yearly reports. And we've, we've found from talking to a, a lot of organizations that sometimes those reports can take days, weeks, or even months to kind of curate all the content that you need to get into there. Um, so we're hoping that this can help you get at least 80% there. Um, where you can review all of the data, you can edit it in Word once you've run it through the, the templating engine and finally publish um, your reports to PDF from Word or whatever format you're using. So in terms of the where, um, the functionality adds a few items to the header menu in Project Firma. Um, so by default, we've, we've left it off right now for most tenants. Um, if you do want it turned on, and if, if this interests you, which I hope it does, um, please feel free to reach out to me or your um, main contact at Sitka Technology, and we can help you turn it on and kind of get you started and answer any questions you have about, um, you know, maybe adding new um, properties or something that you want accessible within your Word documents. Um, yeah, so it adds a couple new menu items. One um, is for projects. That's where you would go select your projects that you include in your reports. And the second one would be a, a place where you can manage all of your report templates. In terms of the win, um, it's right now. Um, we actually squeezed in this functionality, I believe right before, like even days before the last PFUG in March. Um, we didn't quite have time to give, you know, to get, something set up for a demonstration and we we probably would have used a lot of the the pfug meeting to go over it um so here we are today um finally kind of introducing and doing a little bit of training for everybody um let's see i think we're kind of ready to just jump into the demo um, and do some experimentation i know that that i learned best by actually doing stuff and and watching other people do stuff so hopefully by me showing you around the application and using it myself you can get a, a bit more comfortable with with how it works yourself so i'm going to close this um powerpoint here and let's go to the browser so today i'm going to use the the rcd project tracker as an example for this functionality um, they have a lot of they have a lot of data in here and they have a lot of uh, cool images and i think they make for pretty neat reports so it's something to kind of show off to everybody like i said the enabling it is something that sitka has to do um, you don't see any new menu options here you shouldn't yet or you might because i'm an admin and i get some extra stuff but i'm just going to go ahead and enable the report functionality on this this website here real quick So you can see once I enabled it, it added this new reports item to the menu. And if you click on that, there's a couple options. The ones that I previously mentioned, there's projects and then manage report templates. So why don't we go ahead and look into the, the manage report templates here. Right now, there's, there's no report templates in the system because we just enabled it for them. And um, there's a couple of things to kind of mention here. Um, Obviously you can create your report template here, but the, the documentation um, is at the bottom of this page. And I think um, people will find these pretty useful in terms of getting started. Um, we try to do our best to kind of give some documentation on, on how to use it and, and what kind of data you can access. So I can just take a peek into the user guide here real quick. Um, this goes over kind of how to enable it and how to um, add new templates. And then it kind of introduces the, the templating language here um, because we're using C Sharp. There might be some things that people need to know about how to format um, their statements and expressions and stuff like that. 
it goes over some kind of brief um, report examples. Like this is an example of what you could, of kind of an input that you can give to Microsoft Word. And then beneath it, it can kind of, it will give you an example of what the output might be like after you run it through um, the engine here. There's also some, some more details in here about some C-sharp stuff. Um, and it's actually pretty neat. You can do a lot with C-sharp in here. Um, and so much that we can't document all of it. But if you're really curious and um, adept at it, you might want to um, look more into C-sharp itself, into the basics of it. I don't want people to get overwhelmed because there's a lot. but. Um, there might be some syntax stuff that um, can be important or helpful for you to kind of go forward. Um, again, there's some more examples of kind of conditional content, um, some loops and some if statements, things like that in this user guide. The second piece is the, the model documentation. I'm going to go ahead and download this and open it. This is where you can kind of think of this as a cheat sheet for, for what you can put into your Word documents. At the bottom, there's tabs for, for each of these models that we can deal with in Word. And models are just kind of a way that we have set this up specifically for you to access certain properties. So within, the, within Project Firma itself, it has a project model, but we kind of make these shorter models here that are they're simpler and that you can access specific information. Um, not everything is in all of these models that you might expect in Project Firma, um, but we didn't want to speculate as, as to kind of what everybody wanted. We wanted to get, get people started and give them enough to kind of play with it and then kind of come back to us with any questions that they have or any suggestions, um, kind of how they want to go forward. and. If there's something that, you know, if you're making a report in the future and you really would like this very specific information on your project, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, and then we can kind of work with you to get that in, in these, these models and then we'll, we'll update the documentation here so you can kind of go back to your cheat sheet and, and get working again effectively. So I'm just going to minimize this. Um, we'll be back here in a little bit to kind of take a peek at it some more. Um, and then you're also provided with an example report. This example report um, is a functional template um, that can help you get started. Um, I recommend starting from here, and that's what I'm going to do today. Um, it's kind of like a good template that kind of shows you the basics and gets you looping through all of your projects within your, your Word documents. So let's go ahead and download this example report. I'm going to save it, and then I'm going to move it somewhere. Um, where I can find it later. Let's just put it right here, delete this old one. So instead of just making our own template at first, I wanna create a new report template and let's, let's use this example report to kind of get started and kind of show um, on the left side of the screen, we'll, we'll show kind of the, the code and then on the right side, we'll kind of show the output here. So let's, so to make a new report, you click the create a new report template button up here and then you provided a report title. I'm just gonna call it example report. I'm gonna give it a description report for demonstration. Um, the report model field, there's only one option for now, but we wanted to leave it open um, to new models in the future if we wanted to report on other aspects of your project from an instance here. So this will be selected by default and you can't select anything else and that, that's normal and that's to be expected for now. Um, finally, you upload the, the example report or the Word document that you've put your code into, and then you can go ahead and click Save. And actually what it does is it's validating the, the Word document template that you upload. Um, it runs a couple tests on it and makes sure it compiles and it tries to insert some project information. Um, working with words, um, as you probably know, by trying to align images and having text wrap around things and things get kind of messy sometimes, we wanted to make sure that you can only upload valid reports. Um, it would be a shame if you uploaded one that is broken and then you um, kind of couldn't go back to the other copy and we just didn't want you to kind of lose time for that. So we added our example report. 
and Damon, please let me know if I'm going too fast or anything. Um, I'm just going to kind of keep on going here. Um, we added our example report, and it shows up in this grid. Um, you could edit it here, change the title and description, um, and then you can replace the, the document with a new updated one if you wanted to. Um, and then if you wanted to download that template that you uploaded, you can click on this, this link over here for the template file. So if you have a report already in the system and it's working, but you want to make changes to it, a good way to do that is to download that Word document, edit it, and then come back here and, and replace that with a new file here in, in this um, edit report template modal screen. So now that we've started with our example report, we can go back up to the reports menu. And like I mentioned earlier, there's this page called projects. And this is where we're going to select all of the, the projects that we want to include in this report. Um, you might recognize the grids. Um, I know we have these pretty much all over the place in Project Firma, um, but that's for good reason. It allows you to um, filter your projects by various things. So if I wanted to select project stage if completed, I can do that. Um, if I wanted to include into my report only ones that have a planning slash design start year of 2018, I can certainly do that. And then you can also order the, the table here by any of the columns that you see. So why don't we just kind of go with these options. We filtered it down to, to what we want to include in this report. Um, and then you can select either individual projects here, or you can use the, um, the global checkbox here to select or deselect all the ones that you selected. So I'm going to select all of them here. And then finally, you need to click generate reports. And this is where you're going to generate your output Word documentation or your Word document. So there will be a drop down here where you can select between your templates. It's helpful to kind of have a title and description so you know which one you're selecting. It'll give you a quick list, list of the projects that you've selected that are going to be included in the report. And then from there, you just need to click generate. And it's going to download a new Word document to your browser. And you can save it on your computer. You can open it. So let's go ahead and open that. It's off to the side, but I can make that full screen here. So yeah, this is kind of the output from those six or five or six projects that I selected there um, from the template. We scroll down, we can see that we, we can include images. And it's going to kind of loop through each of the projects that we, we selected and, and provide the same information for each of those. So I think a good next step would be to kind of compare the input and the output for this side by side. So let me open up the template here. Now, if any of this is confusing, Damon, if you think this is confusing, let me know. <laughs> I can slow down and kind of get some, some questions resolved there. So. On the left side of the screen, we have the, the, the Word template with code in it, the C-sharp code in it. And on the right side, we have what Project Firma spit out to us um, after it injected all the project information. So at the very top, you can kind of see that this is, I'll enable edit, editing here, get that back over onto the left. You can actually insert stuff into the headers and, and footers of your Word documents. Um, and then at the top of kind of every, every report, what we're doing is we're, we're setting a variable here called projects and you can name this whatever you want. We just think, you know, it's, it's a variable name. It doesn't matter what it is, but that name is going to be referencing the, the model report model in the future. And the model report model is where all of those projects are stored. That's where the word templating engine is going to have all of the six, the five or six projects here. And we're just going to name that variable projects because that makes sense for us. Um, if you're a tenant like Puget Sound Partnership, you might call it near term actions, but the name of the variable doesn't matter. It's just what you're going to be referencing it as in the future throughout this word document. And you might notice that this does not show up in the, the, the output 
It's because everything within the code does not show up in the output, except if you're trying to actually output the code onto the screen. So below that, we have this line here, example report, and we're saying that we want to output it, the, the model report title. There's a couple other properties on the model here. One of them is report title. So if you remember um, back in Project Firma, I named this report. So I gave this report a title of example report. So we can access that within the Word document and that's what's showing right here. Um, to kind of print things out onto the page, you use this equal sign at the beginning of, of these code statements. Um, and I'm sure people are confused, right, already. Um, and that, that's fine, but there is um, the additional documentation that I showed you can kind of goes into more detail of kind of outputting and, and why we use this equal sign here and kind of the syntax of the language. Um, you might also notice that the formatting on this line here on the left, example report, is the same formatting that's output on the right. That's definitely a key feature of this because we want you to be able to, you know, write out your project title and style it with Word, how you want it to appear in your final report. So you'll see that similarly here. This is a font size 24. And if we enabled editing here on the right one, you'll see that it's the same thing. It works. Yep. Yeah, uh, I, we do have a question actually. Uh, Wes wants to know um, if once the, this is activated uh, for a given uh, instance of Project Firma, will all types of users see the reports menu option or is it just select group? Good question. Um, right now it's only limited to admins. So we want to kind of let you play with it and kind of decide with us how we would like to move forward with this. Um, there are a lot of options and that is certainly an option to kind of extend this to allow other people to maybe generate the reports themselves but not be able to add them. Um, but for now, we wanna leave it to admin so, so people can kind of get in there and plan how their organization um, would like to use this going forward. So could, it, right. um, could it, yeah, could it be by instance, um, like let's say if RCD uh, wanted it to be admins and particular project managers perhaps, um, but you know, another instance didn't want to do it like Idaho um, wanted to do it just with admins. Can, is that a possibility or is it all across? Um, right now it's all across, but um, that's also a good question. Um, kind of with how we, we work on pro Project Firma, we can, add custom functionality to allow that. It just depends on the user's needs. So if RCD pro, um, Tracker does want, say, project stewards to be able to access it, we can work on a solution that allows that. Um, but for now, we wanted to get this out there and you know, get people asking great questions like that um, to kind of help us design the future of this as, as we go forward. Great, thank you. Cool. Yeah, you're welcome. So we're, we're printing out the, the report title here. And then after that, um, let me just look at my notes. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Sorry. So yeah, after that, you'll see a for each loop. Um, these are common in programming languages and in programming in general. Um, a lot of the times you have lists of things, like right now we have a list of projects and we kind of want to loop through each of those projects. So the way we do that is we do a for each loop here. We're saying for each variable project in projects and the name of this variable again doesn't matter, but it's, it's good as a programmer or a coder to be clear about what you're doing. <laughs> Um, so we're saying for each project in projects, and then we're opening our loop here with this um, curly bracket right here. And if I scrolled all the way down to the bottom of this template, we'll see the closing loop. Um, so everything within there is going to be repeated for each project that you selected um, in the interface in Project Firma. So that's kind of how we're going to be able to design reports that loop through projects and that include a lot of information um, for a lot of projects within the system. So now once we're inside this for each loop, 
we have access to a lot of to that project model that I mentioned. Um, we named it project, the variable here, but if we went into our documentation here, and maybe I can make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better. The cheat sheet, if we're on the, the project tab, we can see a lot of the, actually all of the, the details that we can get from a project um, and, out, and output, output it to a screen. So what we're doing in this template is we're looping through the projects, and the first thing we're going to do is output the project name with font size 24. And I think this is a, um, if I open styles, I think this is a heading, heading two here. So that translates across to the final Word document. And then the next thing we're going to look at here, the next thing, you know, um, going downwards in this Word document is it looks like we're trying to grab the key photo from the projects. Um, so we're setting another variable to key photo. The name here doesn't matter, but we're going to be clear that we're trying to get a key photo. And then in your documentation, back in the model documentation, we can see um, that there is something here to get the project key photo. So I'm, I'm doing kind of the same thing here. I'm setting a variable with a name um, equal to the project get key photo um, function here. And it, what it does is it returns, if you scroll over to the right, it returns a single project image model. And then if you wanted more information on what that project image has inside of it, you can go here and, and see that information. So we're getting the, the project key photo here. And then what we wanna do is make sure we're only printing the photo if it exists. Um, Word isn't gonna help you very much in, in kind of checking if things exist like this, um, but the examples in, in all the documentation kind of try to reiterate that checking if something exists is a generally a good idea if you're trying to do something more complicated with it. So if a key photo exists, this key photo variable would have information on the key photo. If it doesn't, it's gonna be null. And null basically means empty or not set. So we're checking right here if the key photo is not null. And if the key photo is not null, like the loop, we have this kind of um, curly bracket to indicate everything we wanna do if the key photo is not null. And what we wanna do is output that image on into the Word document. It might be a little bit confusing to see key photo dot image, um, but that's because there's more properties on the key photo. And we're saying we wanna print the image onto the screen. So after that, we're, we're doing some more simple stuff. We're gonna output the description of the project onto the screen. Very simply, we can add the project description like that. Um, I added this line here just to kind of drill it into our heads that you know we, we can design these Word documents with all sorts of um, features and images and stuff beforehand that get output into the document. Um, it's kind of the same way we're trying to access the key photo up here, we're gonna try to access the context now on a project. Um, so we're setting a variable context, contacts, and then from the project objects, from the project model we still have here that while we're inside of this loop, we're trying to get the project contacts. And if we go in back into the documentation here, there should be something right here in your cheat sheet that says, gives you an example of how to get your project contacts. So when you call this, it returns a list of project contact models. So this, this project contacts is gonna be a list of these models right here, which you can then use to output full names, first names, last name, email, phone, contact type, etc. Oops, so let's go back here. So then another kind of key functionality is that um, Word documents tables are pretty important. And we wanted to make sure that we can populate tables appropriately with information. So we're gonna do another for each loop here, um, but this one's a little bit different. Um, because if you can imagine that if we're looping through the contacts and everything within this loop here would get repeated for every contact, um, that would happen um, 
except we put this exclamation mark here. Um, I know it's a little bit confusing um, and the documentation goes a little bit more into that, but that's just a way for us to say, within here we wanna loop through the contacts, but we don't wanna make a full table for every contact that we come into. And we don't wanna repeat this, the small paragraph or sentence here for every contact. So then we would create our table. We can output um, our information here if you had contacts. Um, you can access their, their contact type, their name, last name, full name, and email, phone, and, and maybe some other things here. And lastly, kind of the most important thing um, with dealing with tables is that on the last column here, you need to call this append row function. Um, let's try to expand that just so you can read it a little bit more clearly. What, what this is doing is telling the, the engine to that this is the stopping point for one contact. And appending row means that, okay, next time we're gonna loop through the, this list of contacts, instead of looping through everything here, we're gonna add a new row to this table. Um, so in the output over here, um, I don't believe that there are many contacts um, on the RCD tracker project. So that's why we're not seeing any here. Um, but in the next example or in the next section here while we're dealing with organizations, um, this is pretty much exactly the same as we're dealing with the contacts here, but we're gonna go through all of the organizations. Um, and you can see that our CV tracker does have organizations and it is spitting out data um, based off of the organization relationship type, their name and their short name. Um, so yeah, like contacts, we have a new section here for organizations. And over here on the right, we can see that this project Carbon Farm Plan 3 has four organizations and these are their, the information that um, belongs to that organization. So next, if we're going down, this is ending that loop through the organizations here. And then we're just gonna print out a bunch of other project details that are accessible um, through, the, through the models there. So if I scroll right here on the right um, Word document, you'll see that we're outputting a bunch of um, data from the project model in Project Firma into this Word document. Um, this is most of the things that you can do for now. I don't know if it's all of them, um, but that's kind of what we're looking for is to talk to everybody here and see what kind of information that they would want. I know people have different needs in terms of financial information. Um, and we wanna make sure that we do it justice without kind of guess, guessing what you're gonna want beforehand. So if you have any ideas whatsoever about what kind of stuff you would want to be able to output in your Word document, again, please let us know. It would help us a lot and it would in turn help everybody else within the project from the ecosystem. Um, one last thing to note about this table here is that we are attempting to set the cell color of this table, this one right here, this cell. So first we're printing out the name of the color or the, the hex value, I believe it is. And then we're saying, it's kind of another special thing about this um, word templating engine is that it comes, um, we can add these kind of helper functions here. And this one is for setting a cell color in a table. Um, and we're setting the cell color to the, the project's current project status color. I know a lot of tenants don't use this yet, um, but the way it works, um, you could technically add in any hex value for color into this function. So you don't just need to use the current project status color here. Um, because this is C-sharp, we can do some interesting things. Um, we can set a variable color equals to, actually let's do a conditional statement first. So if, while we're still within this loop, I can access the project, I can access the project stage. So I'm saying if the project stage equals to completed, then I can open up my if statement here and I can just close it real quick so we don't forget about that later. And then within here, I could set a variable of color 
to, let's get some quotes. And I can set that to any kind of hex value, um, hex color values, hex color picker maybe. Let's say I like this color right here. I can grab this hex value. I can go back into my word template and I can set that inside of here. And then we could use that if I put this above this table here. And really sorry if this is confusing, but I could put this above the, the table here. I can set the color if the project is completed to something. I can set the color to something else if it's in the implementation phase. And then I can use that color to set the cell color of, say, this one right here. So then I could just type color. So it knows that this variable color, it knows about this variable color because that happened before it in the Word document. So it's, it's useful to think about things linearly. Um, if you add a variable after and then reference it before, um, you might run into some errors saying that it doesn't know what you're talking about. Um, but this could be a way to kind of different, differentiate colors within tables based off of different stuff. And you don't just have to use project stage. You can do all sorts of stuff here. And that's kind of where the, the beauty of this comes in is that you can get pretty creative. Um, and if you're, um, you know, if you're interested and you have enough motivation, it's something that you can kind of look into and, and you'd be kind of building some programming skills, which is always helpful um, in this day and age. Um, so yeah, that kind of went through, sorry, I'll pull up this one over here again. I kind of went through everything and we're at the end of the loop here. So in our final Word document, if I kept scrolling, we'll see that the next project here starts. This, it goes back up to the top of this loop. And now we're doing, we're at the top of this loop right here. And now we're printing the next project's name. And this one actually does have a key photo, which is pretty nice. Um, kind of shows that this, this image call here does work. Um, there are additional options on this image function call. They are mostly, I, I believe they're fully documented in the, um, in the model documentation here, um, but you can provide it a width. So if you don't want your image to be 100% width of the page, you can set a, a number for maybe 50% or, or whatever you want there. Um, you can also access some other image properties such as the timing, caption, or credit. So then, yeah, if we keep scrolling down, we'll, we'll keep seeing projects being listed with all the project information, some nice photos that RCD Tracker has uploaded to Project Firma. And then, you know, this one's only a, an 11 page report, but you can imagine how these reports can get very large um, if you're using, you know, if you're um, accessing, you know, dozens or hundreds of, of projects that you have in the system. So if you were to do this by hand for each project, that might take you a very long time. But if you set up a template first, you can um, generate these reports um, pretty efficiently um, and get a lot of information in them. So that's kind of the example report that we provide you. It's a good place to start. Um, and if you're making your own report, I highly recommend starting from here, um, testing it, removing stuff and trying to add new stuff if you want it. So are there any questions, Damon, or should I go into kind of making a new report here? I am not seeing any questions from the uh, audience. So if you do have a question, please uh, use the chat or the Q&A. Oh, here's one, one just popped in, let me take a look. Um, how would we get our, Dorothy wants to know, how could we get our logo on the report? Great question. So I think I'll be able to answer that if I go into the, the next phase of this kind of training here. I'll just jump into it now because I, I think we are actually running out of time. I don't know how it's already 1.42. Um, but let's go ahead and make a new report and I'll, I'll hopefully be able to answer that question for you, Dorothy. So I'm going to just close that. I'm not going to save it for now. Let's go download a new, uh, just a fresh example report like you might if you're going to make a new um, Word template yourself. So I'm going to enable edit editing here. And um, so 
kind of how it allows for that branding and and to answer Dorothy's question a little bit, um, say you wanted to add a a cover page. I think that's under insert pages. So let's add a cover page here onto the front of it. Let's just pick one of these right here. And um, you can include this in your template. So I think I have one of these on my desktop. I've got this logo here. Um, I'm just gonna go back, grab that and get rid of that. And I'm gonna paste in Zika's logo here into this Word document. So you can do that. Um, we could insert the report title here, but I'm just gonna put an example report for now. Let's give it a subtitle off the report templating. Um, date, company name, address. Um, actually, this might be a good idea to show that um, because it is C Sharp, you have access to a lot of stuff that C Sharp provides you. So if I wanted, I could output this date here and let's try to keep the formatting merge formatting. So I can actually output, this is like a C-sharp code right here. I'm outputting the, the date time of now. Um, hopefully that'll work. I don't think we're going to run into any issues of that. Um, but I think that might answer your question, Dorothy, is that you, a lot of the times you might want to put your branding in beforehand um, and just treat it like you're creating a Word document. You're, you're on your cover page. You can edit it however you like, make it pretty, make it perfect. And then you can get into kind of the the, the nitty gritty stuff um, after the fact. Um, so we added kind of the SICA technology group stuff there. And for this example report, say, um, say that like NOAA or some, some organization wants a report on all of your projects that are in the completed phase and they wanna see um, before, and after, before and after photos and a description of each of those projects. So what I can do is I'm, I'm starting again with this example report and I'm just gonna kind of rip out a lot of stuff here that I don't want. I don't need this anymore. I do wanna loop through all the projects. The key photo at the top would be nice, um, but we don't really care about contacts or organizations right now. So let's get rid of those. Uh, similarly with all these other project details right here. Oh, there's a meeting coming up in 15 minutes. Um, so then I'm just gonna try to get rid of this um, border. Cool, and then um, what we wanna do is we wanna access the before photos and the after photos in this. So um, kind of like the examples above it, we want to go ahead and set a variable here. So let's call it before photos equals project. And if I wanted to go look at the cheat sheet here, I could find this in the project tab down here. Um, so you can actually get photos by the timing in Project Firma. Okay, enable editing. I'm just gonna copy this, this text right here and let's paste that into here. Let's get rid of that for now. Paste that straight from the cheat, cheat sheet. So I'm saying before images equals the project which is the loop that we're in. Actually, I think we're outside of the loop right now. I need to make sure to get that within the loop. And we're saying get the get project images by timing of before. And then what I might wanna do is I wanna check if there are any before images. So I'm gonna do if before images dot any. And this is just making sure that this is only gonna print out to the screen if there are project images. So if there are any of them, we can go ahead and insert, um, let's go styles, let's do a heading three of the four photos. And then after that, I wanna just, um, then I want to loop through all of them. So for each var photo in, I'll call it image just to make it more clear for each variable image in before images. And let's do that loop there too. And then we wanna print out, I'm just gonna copy this here real quick. So what programmers do, they copy a lot of codes. But this time we want to um, 
it's not called key photo this time, it's just called image. And then if I wanted to output the image caption, I can do image dot, and let's go look at the documentation here, um, dot image caption. So go back dot image caption, and that will print out the caption. And so we wanna do after photos. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna copy the before stuff paste it here, but this time I'm just going to rename it to after images, and then we're going to change this function call to after, and then we're saying if there are any after images, we want to print out this stuff, so let's change this to after photos for each variable image in after images. We want to print out the image here, and we also want to print out the caption, so unless I made any mistakes, um, I believe this will work. Let's give that a try. I'm going to save this. Um, I have a folder on my desktop that we can use. Let's do um, demonstration or live demonstration. Ports. And then I should be able to go back to Project Firma, back into my report center, create a new report template. And let's, um, what did we call it? We called it live demonstration. Template, can't change anything here. Let's keep it like that. And let's try to upload that, see if it works. Hopefully, don't get any errors. Okay, great. And then let's run that reports on all projects that are in the completed stage. I'm gonna filter it down to completed. I'm gonna select all of them, click generate reports. And we're gonna, now that we have two, we're gonna choose which report template that we wanna use. I'm gonna use the live demonstration one. There's a list of all the projects and we're gonna click generate. Um, because we're accessing a lot of images, this one might take longer than the other ones. Um, it still is, you know, impressively fast. Um, in my opinion, that it's able to insert that much information. There we go. Um, we've got it downloaded back. And we can open this outputted Word document. And we'll see that um, the SICA logo is still there. That is in the, the cover letter that we added before. It prints out the date and the time that we printed it. And then it goes through each of the projects in the, the completed phase, displays their title, the key photo, the description, and then before photos with a caption for each of them. And if this one had after photos, it would also display the after photos. So it's just gonna loop through this and let's see how many pages this, this made. So this made a 206 page report in um, just a couple minutes there. And something that I think is pretty neat, um, I'm gonna enable editing on this. Um, like I was mentioning that we're, we're trying to get you like 80 or 90% of the way there. Um, something that I like to do and you know, on a long report like this, you might want to insert a table of contents. Um, and I can just go ahead and add a table of contents to this. And because we used all of the, the headings when we were making our template, we have this, um, pretty well formatted table of contents here right off the bat. Um, I noticed that the, um, the cover letter got pushed after that, um, but I, you know, that's not a huge deal. I think it just inserted the table of contents where I was at currently. So we could do that again if we wanted, but um, you know, so we get, we get you to this far within your report. You can go ahead and go through, say you don't like this photo, of course, you can feel free to delete it. Um, you're not gonna mess up the template by deleting anything in here. You could always go back and run it again. Um, so you might go through your report, curate it. You might add additional notes that you can come up with. Um, just kind of make sure that the project or the report is doing kind of exactly what you want there. And then once you're done, you might save it as a PDF file. Let's go back to my desktop and let's save this as a PDF. It's a, it's a rather large file. I mean, there's there's 200 plus pages with a lot of images. Um, so I find that relatively impressive that that it, that it does work and it, it doesn't break when we're doing that. Um, but it's thinking pretty hard with making this PDF report. 
So yeah, you've got your table of contents here that we just added real quickly afterwards. And you can go ahead and click on these and go down to their appropriate sections. Um, so you can kind of quickly scroll through here and you'd be like, oh, but they got goat ranch rainwater catchment project where some of the before photos look like. And you can go directly to that. So I think I'm running out of time. Um, so I guess I'll try to wrap this up. That's kind of a, a live demonstration of, of making a report kind of live in front of everybody here. Um, I hope that was useful. Um, and I hope that nobody is too scared of, of starting to do, starting to work with these things. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm, I'm really excited about it actually. Um, and I hope that everyone here or watching the video can kind of imagine some of the possibilities that, that you can make with this. Um, I think we're going to find that similarly to Marathi share, um, you guys are going to impress us with, with kind of what you end up doing with this and, and kind of with the questions that you have and everything like that. So um, I can go on and on and on, but it's probably a good time to, to get to some Q&A stuff. Again, one last time, please, please, please feel, re feel free to reach out to me um, regarding any kind of questions you have here. I I'd be happy to help. And if I can't help, I'd be happy to forward your question to anybody else that can. Great. Okay. Thank you so much, um, mm -hmm. Stuart. I do have a question here. Um, this is from Eileen. Are the public notes an, are the public notes an option? Are the public notes an option? Um, does that... Let's see, what does that refer to? I might not quite understand that question. Is that, is that a not, Word document thing? It, that's all that it says in the okay. chat. Um, but we can, oh, from, from Tracker, she said. Are the public, the public notes? notes? Okay, um, I don't believe they are currently, um, but if that's what's, it, what it's gonna take for us to, to kind of get you in here using it, we, I'm, I'm sure we would, love to kind of get that in there for you. And then Carrie, she says, are we able to run a report for all projects funded by a specific funding source or is that outside the project model? Um, that's a very good question. Let's go look at the project model right here. Um, funding source. And I'm, I'm glad that we have this recorded. So I wanna make sure that I answer all these questions um, if I can't right now, um, but in more detail later with some, some personal emails. Um, if, if there's an option, if you know that there's an option in, in your table here, actually, I think you, you can, like if, if by funding source, you mean funding type. <clears throat> and if, if you can basically, if you can see it on your, your projects grid, over here, um, we can, you should be able to filter it down within this um, reports project grid too, to help you kind of filter down by a specific funding source. Um, but again, excellent question. And if you can't, um, if you can't see a column for that, we can help you kind of view that and, and help you filter down the projects. Um, we'd, we'd love to, to help you with that. Um, I have one other, one final question here. Um, maybe if we have time to answer, or if not, we could, um, you could follow up uh, just directly. Um, okay. It says, if you have time, I think it's relevant to others here. Would you say a few words about whether and how the template uh, C sharp and syntax might vary from that used by the Marathi report generator? Will it only be the fields and the values, of course, that might vary significantly? Sure. Um... So we, we tried to set it up similarly because we know that some project firmer users have used uh, Marathi. Um, the syntax is going to vary a little bit. We tried to keep it as close as we could, um, but you'll notice that these kind of um, angle brackets and percentage symbols are, are different than what you're used to um, in Marathi. Um, Marathi uses a, a Python engine to support theirs because their their project is is written in Python um, and our project here is written in C sharp so naturally it translates over to C sharp um, but if you have any questions of like why something differs so much or if you run into any troubles with that um, yeah feel free to reach out to me um, and Damon if you can kind of 
um, give me a list of all these questions. I'd love to reach out to people afterwards to give them more detailed answers. Yeah. I will provide you the complete list. Perfect. Uh, well, I know that you have another uh, meeting to go to, Stuart. So I do. <laughs> I just want to thank, thank you for taking the time. And uh, for everyone who's on the call, um, I am recording it, so I will be posting it. Uh, so it will be available. Um, you'll all get an email uh, basically letting you know where when it's been posted and where to find it. Um, next week, we're doing another web training with Jolly. It's on evaluations. Um, you can register to attend that on our website and on the events page. Um, and if you have rec suggestions for future web trainings, just let us know. We'd love to you know, keep doing this. So thank you all. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Seriously. Okay, take care. Bye. All right. Goodbye.